Hey there everybody, it's Nathan Cool with NathanCoolPhoto.com and this is episode three of three for doing those gigapixel panos. Now this episode is the ultimate fix for any color banding issues that you have by doing a sky swap on this 360. This is also very useful if you have blown out skies or any other case where you want to change something. When it comes to color banding, the ultimate fix, as I mentioned in the previous video, is that we want to avoid a complete completely clear sky that has very, very minute changes across a very large distance where the color is almost steady. So there's very small changes. There's not enough color space once we get down into the 8-bit world where these hosting platforms for 360s use JPEGs at 8-bit and then start stretching that around. So anyways, having a somewhat cloudy sky avoids that problem. So it adds more texture to it. So here I'm going to show how it's done. Obviously, it's a lot different than doing just a standard sky swap for, for instance, real estate photography. In the 2D realm, it's not that big of a deal, but in 360, it has to be seamless. We also have to deal with a zenith at the top. So I'm gonna cover how that's all done. It's a lot simpler than what you may think, but there are some other steps involved compared to what we would do for normal sky swaps. So let's get started and take a look at how that's done. All right, so this is a little bit of a different workflow compared to the last two videos. So once again, though, just to recap, what we'll be looking at is it's this. We wanna see this sky being swapped. As you might recall uh, from just doing a standard pixel, uh, mega, excuse me, giga pixel pano, we've got this banding in the sky on the episode two, the last one. Then we got rid of most of that, but we added a little bit of grain into the sky, which might not be acceptable in all cases. So the ultimate solution is to do a sky swap, but how do you get it so that it's seamless like this? There is no seam, and if we look up to the top, yeah, there's a little bit of a weird zenith, but it's not bad. If somebody really wants to go in there and look at that, well, bless their heart. So um, what we're gonna do is learn how to do this sky swap. It's a little bit different than what we would do for normal sky swaps for real estate. So let's get started. The workflow from this is to first take your stitched panel. So we haven't done the cube faces yet. We're gonna do that here in the next couple steps. If you're unfamiliar with what I was talking about with cube faces, then you wanna take a look at episode one for that workflow, but I'm gonna be covering it some here. Basically, this was just the stitched Giga Pixel panel, and that's why you can see that I've got down here on the Nader, I've got the, uh, the tripod. So what we wanna do first is, once again, resize this to our uh, Mars Apano size, because what we'll be using, so we wanna get this down to 23,000 pixels wide. So let's get this down to 23,000 pixels wide building that preview. These are very huge files when you're shooting this, uh, as I showed in episode one. Um, so, and by the way, uh, once again, all those episodes, links to them down in the description for the video. So let's go ahead and resize that, and that's good. And once again, we're working with 16-bit tips. You need to work in 16-bit to make sure that you don't introduce any color banding. 8-bit is where it comes into play when we're working with JPEGs, when these hosting services then make all their tiles. So we'll zoom in here a little bit. Now that's 23,000. Now what we can do is we can just apply the Adobe Camera Raw like we did the last time, and we'll just apply it to everything. So once again, just to recap on that, I'm just gonna duplicate that layer. I'm gonna go up to Filter, Camera Raw Filter. I'm gonna apply that preset just like I did the last time. And once again, I'll show you what that is. It's one of my favorites for just doing some standard exterior stuff. So I'm gonna go over here to Presets and then select my exterior 5k. So I'll do that and that is when we go over here and look at the settings for it, going from the top down if you need to pause it to write this down, contrast 5, that would lower the highlights, up the shadows, up the whites, lower the blacks, up the clarity, a little bit of vibrance and saturation and then some sharpening. Okay, so let's go ahead and apply that. Now here, we don't have to worry about isolating the sky like we did in episode two because we're just gonna replace the sky. So this will make this part a little bit faster. 
Okay, now let's do our sky swap. So we want to bring in first a sky. So what I've got over here is a sky. And this sky is gonna be nothing super special and it's very small because it was taken with, it's just one frame, it's not a gigapixel panel. And whenever I'm shooting a property and I see a neat sky, I look up and then I go ahead and take you know one of these. So I got a collection, I love this one, it has clouds and you do want to have something that has clouds in it. And as you can see, that is very small. We'll just place it in there for now. What we need to do is make that bigger, but first we also have to make sure that it's going to align halfway. So let's just move that out of the way for right now. We'll just uh, bring that out and use the move tool and we'll just place it over there. That's fine. What we want to do now is place a guide. So what we want to do is go up to the view menu and we want to place a new guide and we want to place this halfway. Remember that we resize this to 23,000 pixels wide. So we're going to add a vertical one at 50%, which is 11,500 pixels. Well, now we've got our guide. Make sure that you've also got snap to on and it's good to have it just snap to all, which then it's guides, grid, everything. So that allows us to then work with this better. For instance, now I can take this layer and with the snap on, it'll snap into the corner like that. I'll change its opacity so I can see what I'm gonna do because next I'm gonna resize it by going to edit, transform, and then under scale. So anyways, hold down shift and stretch that out so you can get control. And I'm gonna get it down here. Yeah, it's not one-to-one, -one, but boom, look at how it snapped then to that center grid. So that looks pretty good. So I'll just hit enter and that'll go in. If we go into 100% opacity and 100% zoom, what's going to happen is we're gonna see then a bunch of grain introduced because I was stretching the heck out of it. So very simple fix for that. First, let's just rasterize this. So let's go over here to the layer and we'll just rasterize it so it's not gonna add on by default the smart objects. That'll just slow us down. So let's go up to filter and we want to go to noise and we want to select median. That's just a nice way of denoising. It smooths things out. I find for this usually about eight works real well. Now it's going to look a little funky down here on where the house is and all that. We don't care. Clouds can be soft. So we'll just say okay and that'll apply then that median effect which will smooth out that noise. And there goes my fans again because we're working with such a huge file here. Massive, massive stuff. So taking up a lot of memory memory CPU processing. Won't take that long though to do here, especially I've got, like I said, those solid state drives. So now we've got that in place. Well, that's only one side of it. Let's go back here, drop the opacity down so we can see what's going on. And now I need to duplicate this layer and flip it. So I'm gonna duplicate it. I did Control J. And then I'm gonna go to Edit. And then I'm gonna go to Transform. And then I'm going to then flip this horizontally. So that will flip it, take the move tool, hold down shift so you go in a straight line and shift it over to the other side and it should snap like that in place. Now we can get rid of this uh, grit up here, this uh, guide. So we'll just go clear guides under view and we'll set the opacity to both of these to 100%. Okay, so now we've got a fairly good sky swap. There's a little bit of a seam. If you go in here, it goes away, but when you zoom out, it's still kind of there. Plus, that just looks like a Rorschach test right there, so we want to fix that also. So the next step for doing this is to take one of those sky layers and duplicate that. So let's go up to the top one. We'll duplicate that with a Control J. Take the Move tool, hold down shift while you're moving it so you keep it there. We'll just move that kind of over in the center. Then just go layer mask hide and then take a brush and start brushing like around where that is. And probably good to go to 100% flow, get some of that out. So especially this is going to be our um, uh, zenith up here. Okay, so we can do that and boom. So that, that's looking pretty good. If we did a little bit too much, just make a smaller brush or erase some of that, um, however you see fit that you wanna make your sky look. Now the key to this now, our seam went away, is to sky swap this properly, we want to group all three of these into one group. So it'll act as one layer. So you select all of them, right click, group from layers, and we'll call this sky group. Now we can add a layer mask to that. So let's go layer mask hide. Now, just like you do any other sky swap, go to 
your layer and do a select color range. So let's go to select color range and it's still selected from the last time but we'll start fresh for this video. Take the eyedropper, click it down here near the horizon, take the plus, go around the horizon, make sure that we get stuff that's going to be near the horizon for those colors and then take and start working your way up by click, 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 getting all these colors across the sky. If you use a quick selection tool, you're gonna have a hard time getting around like all these leaves and the little fine edges of stuff. So I like to do this type of a sky swap to get most of it in, and you can adjust the fuzziness as you need to to make sure that it starts showing white across the sky. Okay, let's say that's good and we'll click OK. Then we're probably gonna have to go in and refine this a little bit with the quick selection tool, just like I did before on the last video when I was doing just the standard noise fix. Let's see what it picked. Yep, yeah, sure enough, didn't get quite out here. So we'll use the quick selection tool, holding the Alt key down so it deselects and we'll go right across some of this over here. We're gonna do the same thing over here on the other side over here so that we can get those mountains in the distance in view, and that's not looking too bad. So what's gonna happen though, we should at this point zoom in, because this is huge, and see what we missed. I can see that, yeah, we missed some stuff. So in here, we're just gonna refine that a little bit. So we'll go over here, make sure that this is selected, and every time you do, it has to do its thing like this, and same over here. And then you would do this for everything around the edge here. So let's just do that real quick. Get these in there. That's good, just like that. Maybe a little bit of that mountaintop there is gonna look pretty good. And it gets a little bit trickier. Remember, this is huge, but the results on this are just gonna be a world different. So now we go over here, see what we're missing over here on these mountain ranges. There's a little bit over here that's missing, and we could probably leave that out. It's so far in the distance, but what the heck, we'll just add that in there too. So we'll just add that in real quick. Once again, I'm just doing Alt and then clicking with the quick selection tool, and then that means that I remove it. If you notice at the top when I hit Alt, it changes that from plus to a negative on the tool. Okay, now that I've got that, that looks pretty good. Let's zoom back out, go up here to that sky group layer mask, press X to reverse your colors to black and white, and hit the delete key. And that adds the sky. Reverse your colors back with X, zoom out, and now we need to make sure that we don't have any of the ground. So use a polygon tool and just very roughly select near where the ground is, like that, go all the way down, like that, and now press delete. And that gets rid of all those other little bits. Now the next step is, is to try to refine some of this on the horizon. So did we miss some stuff here? So what's going on there? No, those are those mountain ranges in the distance. So we're gonna fix that. First thing I like to do is something like this. You can see it looks unnatural because that sky is a little bit darker than the rest of the scene. So let's add a, an adjustment layer onto it. So let's go to layer and we're gonna to go to new adjustment layer, brightness and contrast, and what we're going to do is add a clipping mask here, which means it will only affect that sky group. Then let's up our brightness, boom. Now that's starting to look more natural, so without it and with it, so that's looking pretty good. So now we can go in, it's like, well, do we still have some stuff here? This is now where we fix the horizon. So zoom out, select that layer mask, select your eraser, use about maybe a 20, 30% flow, and we want just the upper part of the eraser to go across the horizon so that it erases some of that out. You can go once or twice across there, and now we start having a, a more natural looking horizon, which would normally be a little bit hazy and not have so many clouds across it, okay? So now that's looking pretty good. Let's say that's satisfactory for what we want. Our sky swap is pretty much done, but we still need to probably patch up a little bit of the seam and we want to get rid of that nadir down there also. So let's go layer flatten and we're going to save this then as a, uh, another TIFF and then we'll be using PT GUI to finish the process. So let's go ahead and just say file as Okay, and then here uh, we'll save this as, we'll say under sky swaps here, we'll call it the um, after edits and sky. Okay, 
and we will just save that. I'm not gonna embed this Nikon profile in there, by the way, because <laughs> that's what it was uh, trying to save. Probably doesn't matter, it's a standard sRGB for the most part. But anyways, that will save, it's kind of a big file. Now we go over to PT GUI, and we go to Tools, and we go to Convert to Cube Faces. We wanna find that file, so we go to here on the sky swaps. Here's our after edits and sky. So we'll open that up. And in the same directory then we'll leave it and do our convert. And this will then convert and create those six cube faces that we want to see. And you can see they're starting to load up over here, but just seeing the progress here on PT GUI, that's all there is to it. So what we're going to do is now load each one of these as we need to into Photoshop to finish our edits. So let's go back to where these are. First thing off the bat, let's see if anything on the back side here uh, had a seam in it. So let's just drag that in there, and there is. There's a seam problem. So what we can do now is take the clone tool, and we'll do that, and we'll just start cloning some spots over here across this seam. And this starts making then this look a little bit more natural for the sky. And you can get really precise with what you want to do here. Anyways, that's pretty good. Now just save that, control S, and now we'll just close that. And by the way, we don't need this thing anymore either, so we'll just close that. Now over here, we did the back. We can see then, is there anything with the front that needs to be done? We'll inspect that real quick. That looks good, close that out. And the others should be good as well. I know for a fact that there's two other ones we wanna do, and that's going to be the bottom, and that's then also going to be the top. So next thing we wanna do is take a look at the bottom which has then our tripod in it. So we'll do a quick uh, content aware fill by selecting our lasso tool, going around like this. Bump, 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 bump. And then we'll go to our edit menu. We'll go to fill, make sure it says content aware and say okay. So once that's done, we'll just save that and that will be fixed. So no nader, boom, done. Control S to save it. Close that. Now, let's fix that zenith. If we take a look at the top here, we can see it's gonna look real funky. Yeah, you, you can leave it if you want. Um, I'm gonna use uh, the patch tool, the spot healing tool up here, I should say. So over here, you've got some different options, and I'm gonna use spot healing brush tool. And I just like to make it real big around here and just see what Photoshop will figure out. I just hit that in the center, see what happens. Hey, you know, it's not too bad. Let's just leave it at that. Hit Control S done and now we just close that out. So now we can build this pano back up again. So let's go into uh, PT GUI. We'll get rid of this convert to cube spaces and we want to now make that new pano with these images. So we got back, bottom, front, left, top, and right. When we put those into PT GUI, just like I've shown before with doing this uh, cube spaces, it knows that it's already aligned. So now all you have to do is just say create panorama. So here what I'm going to do is in that directory, I'm going to say that this is our finished pano, like that. And then I'll just create that panorama. So that will then generate our finished panorama. And if we were to bring that up in the Photoshop just to look at it real quick, we can see then finished pano is here. You can see that is going to look pretty good. So it's a big file once again, but there's our sky swap. You can see it, sure enough, it stretched the, uh, the zenith up here, which would be expected. We don't have any seams. And of course, then when we look at it, once it's in marzipano, then it looks really nice. There is no seam. The zenith is, you know, acceptable. We could really clean that up if we wanted to. But the big thing is there is no banding. So this is the ultimate fix, whether it's going to be for a banding fix or whether it's an overcast day or you just want a better sky in there. Remember, pick a sky that has a lot of clouds in it and you're gonna have then enough texture to not have that massive amount of color differential through a gradient that then can induce that color banding. So I hope this video in this entire series of these three videos on gigapixel panels was useful for you and that you can use some of this in your photography as well. If you did like this video and you want to see more, you can subscribe, 
to my YouTube channel. It won't cost anything, and as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, take care, be safe, and get out there and shoot something.